Hi, this is Lauren Fogelman at ExpertSportsPerformance.com, working with highly driven, motivated athletes on having more focus, confidence, the ability to effectively deal with distractions when competing for consistent high performance. Today's topic is the emotional freedom techniques relieves a triathlete's post-race depression. Recently, I met Beth. She had the event of her lifetime. It was a milestone for her. She was a triathlete in the Kona Ironman. Now, it was a good event, lessons learned, but there's no perfect race. What happened afterwards is she started feeling the blues, just not herself, something felt a little bit off, and she didn't know what was going on. So we got to talking, and basically, there were three different areas that we covered, and I wanted to share them with you also because after a race, like the a race of a lifetime, the race of the season, or even when a season is over, if you're playing a team sport, there's something that happens and shifts when all of a sudden it's done, it's behind you, and now what? So let's go through the different things we talked about and how they might apply for you also. So this is the first one. Basically, Beth had some unmet goals, and she felt that the race was a disappointment. Her time was about an hour off from what she figured it would be, and for her, that was just devastating. She wasn't able to pull together what she thought for, for having her best race ever. So there were her unmet goals because she wasn't able to get her numbers. She didn't perform as well as she would have liked to in different parts of the race. Some things caught her off guard, and as a result, her time wasn't that great, it was a real disappointment for her because she worked all this time towards a particular goal and when it didn't come and pan out that way, it really was a letdown. And she didn't know what to do with it at the moment. So aside from the unmet goals and the disappointment, she also was feeling unmotivated because, let's face it, when you're going to race in Kona Ironman, it's not like you don't do any practice or anything like that, you just show up and you're good to go. There is months of training. For some athletes, it's a year-long process. Everything you do has to do with building up towards this particular day. It affects your social life, your work life. It affects what time you wake up, what you eat, how you train, your family, the people that you are connected with. It affects every single waking aspect of your day. So once it's over, once again, there was no motivation because she didn't have the next thing to work towards. As a result, she started feeling kind of blue and aimless. So that was part of what was going on is along with the unmet needs and the disappointments, she just wasn't feeling very motivated uh, because it's starting to get a little bit colder right now. Getting out of bed in the morning to go run or bike just wasn't very appealing. She'd rather sleep for another hour. So that was something to go and think about also. But something to really think about as well is that after a, an epic race like that, your body's pretty tired. You need to give it some time to recover. And that's part of why she wasn't feeling that motivated either is because she was just spent and now she needs to really let her body recover, restore itself, heal itself before she can really get back into the full swing of things again. The other part was understanding the whole thing, looking at the big picture because it wasn't all bad stuff that happened and disappointments. There were some really good parts to her race. Some pieces where she had great moments, great connections. The overall experience was probably a really good thing. But at the moment, she wasn't able to see that because she felt this overlying depression kind of hanging on her shoulders. So what we also were looking at is what were the insights that she got as a result of going through this entire process leading up to this day and then being a finisher, which in and of itself is a great thing to have happen. But the other part is what were the lessons learned from this? What were the takeaways? What could she do a little bit differently next time? My motivation was really to help her shift her perspective around it a little bit so that instead of feeling down about things and disappointed, we can find ways to really lift her up, build upon it, and pull out some of the real sweet spots. 
What we also did is because her energy was a little bit off and she was still hurting a little bit, we did the emotional freedom techniques. It's one of my favorite things to do with my clients is let's kind of break that negative energy that's going on in your body and let's shift it so that we can then go to neutral and add to neutral. We can put in some positive stuff so we can set it up for the way forward. And that's what I would like to do with you also. Think about something where you're feeling a little bit of a letdown, disappointment, maybe you had some unmet goals. Now get as specific as possible as you can about that particular situation or event. When you think about that, what emotion comes up for you? And be as specific as possible. Take that emotion and let's go ahead and rate it, rate it from 0 to 10, with 0 being absolutely no intensity whatsoever, 10 being extreme intensity for that emotion. Now that you have that rating, see if you feel that emotion in your body anywhere, and if so, what does that feel like? Just like I did some tapping uh, with my client, let's go ahead and do some tapping with you as well. Just follow along with what I'm going to do, even if this is new for you. It's not going to hurt, and it definitely can help. Uh, and if the words don't seem right for you, go ahead and change them because this is a very forgiving process. But what we're going to do is start by tapping on the outside of your hand here. It doesn't matter which hand you use. About the same pressure as if you were drumming your finger on the tabletop. So go ahead and let's get going. Even though I feel these blues, I'm just not motivated. I have these unmet needs and I'm disappointed. I deeply love and accept all parts of myself. And I'm ready to turn it around, create a new perspective, get some insights. And when my body is ready to, I'll move forward again. Let's go ahead and tap above your eyebrows. I have these unmet goals. Go to the side of your eyes. The disappointment is weighing heavily on me. Under your eyes, right on your cheekbones. I let myself down. I didn't hit my numbers. One hand on your nose. I should have been faster. One hand under your lips. I got distracted because there were some things I didn't plan for. Collarbone. When I, was, when I hit my wall, my inner critic just showed up under your arms. I've been really, really hard on myself. Top of your head. All I can think about is the blues that I'm feeling, the disappointment, and when people ask me about my times, I feel ashamed. Go to your eyebrows. Now we're going to turn a negative into a positive. I'm a finisher at the race. I, I really worked hard for it. Go to the side of your eyes. I gave it everything I had. Under your eyes. I'm humbled by the experience. One hand on your nose. I did have some really great moments. Under your lips. I learned a lot about myself through the entire process. Collarbone. I finished what I began. Go under your arms. I set a challenge for myself. I gave it everything I had. I know I did the best I could given the circumstances. Top your head. I've learned some really tough things about myself. And I'm pretty resilient given the circumstances. I finished the race. I know more now than I did before. Can't wait to see what the next goal and challenge will be. Go ahead and stop tapping. Take a deep breath in. Now check in with yourself. That emotion that you had before, that you gave it a number, see if that emotion has shifted anymore, that emotional intensity is any more, any less. If you felt it in your body anywhere, did that change, did that feeling change at all for you in your body? 
And if so, how? I see any change, whether it's up or down, as a sign that we're moving in the right direction. If you're not down to the zero, go through this with me again, tap with me again, and get even more specific on what your particular issue is. Because sometimes they get a little squirrely when you started with one thing, and then it changes to something else. So if it changes something else, then we might have actually resolved that first issue, and you're just on to the next one, which means that we're moving forward, there's progress there. What I want you to think about is what I do with my client. We talked about the fact that the time that she was really looking at for herself and how she was defining herself by her time was basically her ego talking. It was that inner critic getting in the way, just pointing out the should-haves, the could-haves, the would-haves, everything that didn't happen well, all that negative stuff. But what I want you to do is turn around and focus on all the positives. What are the takeaways? How do you feel just because you showed up, you went through the whole process, and you completed the season or the race for yourself? What I have is a challenge for you. This is your challenge. I want you to go ahead and find the insights from going through this process. What were the lessons learned? that you maybe next time if you were in a similar situation, you do it a little bit differently. What is it that you learned about yourself? What are some qualities that really came through that helped you to really be resilient and be able to complete and stick with it even when it got really tough? Then let's look at what some of the strengths were that really helped you through the toughest moments and what were some of the weak, weak areas? Then I want you to go ahead and decide what is it that you're going to have as your goal in the future, the next race, the next season, and what some of the necessary steps that you want to put in place so you can have your best race ever. If you're interested in my new training series, it's free on how to boost your performance, the seven essential steps, go to my website, expertsportsperformance.com, Put in your name and email address, and immediately you'll get that first of three video training series uh, on the seven essential steps. And post a comment. Let me know what your takeaways are from doing the tapping, getting the insights, recognizing that maybe you might have post-race depression or post-season depression. It does exist. But it also goes away, and getting that next goal when the time is right is going to really help you get focused once again. Like I said, post a comment, click on the like button to be able to forward this and just let me know that this was something you had some value from. I look forward to hearing from you. Lauren Fogelman, expertsportsperformance.com, and my mission is to show athletes how to stay cool in the heat of the moment.